Welcome to The Road Not Taken, discussions with assorted professionals with background in mathematics. I'm your host, Ider Kikianti. And I'm your host, Belinda Stovelbar. And we are joined today by my old friend, Gior Simarmata. Hi, Gior. Hello. Gior and I studied together back in Indonesia at Bandung Institute of Technology. He was a year behind me. Um, and after graduating from uh, Indonesia, he went to France to study quantitative finance. He's currently living in the Netherlands and he's been there for uh, a long time now, since 2012, and currently working as a senior business analyst at Rabobank. Um, apart from his career in banking, Gior is also involved in academia and research in quantitative finance. And we'll ask him all about this uh, throughout the podcast. But first, um, per usual, Gior, we always ask our guests to tell a little bit about themselves, particularly their mathematical journey. Yes. Hello. So, uh, yeah. Uh, good morning, everyone. Well, yeah. So, um, <clears throat> I actually um, uh, started my uh, mathematics journey uh, already like um, many years now, 20 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> yeah. Back uh, when I was in bachelor, um, was a uh, quite uh, a, a very interesting start for me uh, because uh, I never thought that uh, I would be really involved uh, especially in uh, in mathematics field especially uh, pure mathematics yeah uh, my hobby since I was a little kid was uh, more into computer and mathematics is very abstract than uh, when when I started but eventually, I followed uh, some pure mathematics uh, courses, uh, like algebraic structure, uh, differential, differential geometry, and so on. Uh, even though, in the end, uh, my bachelor thesis in the end with uh, genetic algorithm uh, optimization. Yep. Uh, however, uh, these were proven useful when I start, decided to start my master degree in quantitative finance. Um, that was started in uh, 2009 until uh, 2011, yeah, uh, in which it was actually in uh, much more economics department, but they really use uh, a lot of uh, mathematical proving and techniques in economy. Uh, I actually already expected quite of this because uh, uh, my father also was, uh, he's a sort of a, uh, lecturer, professor in uh, economics uh, in mm. Indonesia. Um, so I already, uh, let's say, got some lectures in economics from from small kids <laughs> and have some expectations that uh, mathematics is going to be like a heavily uh, influenced uh, economy uh, discipline. But uh, I never thought to the level that uh, pure mathematics uh, courses that I have uh, attended uh, back in my bachelor years. And that eventually uh, led me uh, yeah to some research in the end yeah uh, strangely enough it's quite much more in the back in the applied mathematics field uh, because quantitative fi finance is uh, quite much like a sort of a best friend <laughs> with applied mathematics uh, subdiscipline mm -hmm. in which uh, my research master thesis uh, related uh, to the use of a uh, unique finite uh, element method, so semi-Lagrangian discontinuous Galerkin algorithm. Um, it was sort of uh, like a research internship. And if I thought about it myself again right now, it's actually in a military, military base site. <laughs> uh, it's a sort of a close uh, military complex in southern of Paris. Because, uh, <clears throat> um, yeah, they were like... A, like uh, you can see people with uh, military uniforms uh, going around in the in the in the research complex. Mm -hmm. um, my professor, uh, when I did that research, he's uh, involved with the uh, multi rocket launcher research. I thought he already wrote uh, some uh, some papers on that. That was uh, Olivier Bukanovsky. Yeah. Uh, so from there, I I, I uh, wrote some codes in uh, first in Scilab 
and then in C++, so Scilab is just like a French version <laughs> of a, of a MATLAB. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then I wrote my code in C++. So after my graduation, and of course getting some paid for my internship, yes, <laughs> I went back to Indonesia uh, in 2011 after my graduation. But then I was invited back again for a, for a two weeks research to extend the research, which was initially for finance, so for option pricing problem. Uh, using the algorithm for solving option uh, pricing problem to a much more uh, uh, generalization of it. So like uh, you can think about the the advection uh, diffusion problem. Yeah, the, the classical okay. partial differential equations uh, problem. Uh, we made a generalization on it. Uh, even after I went back from uh, that two weeks research that was this time in uh, Eco Polytechnic, so in uh, Paleso, um, also another like a sort of a, a, a military-based uh, school, if you know the system. Um, uh, I went back to Indonesia, continued the coding, and then I got a job in Rabobank in 2012. So I went back to the Netherlands, but then part, in part-time, I'm still working when I professor. So every now and then, like once or twice every year, I went to Paris only to uh, talk with him and then to try to continue the codes. Uh, because uh, this time he really would like to publish our work, um, in which uh, yeah, it's it's quite a funny situation actually. I mean, professionally, I'm an <laughs> I work in a bank, <laughs> but I'm still dealing with some equations uh, that uh, in some cases are uh, totally unrelated to to my work. Um, there are some relation, but uh, it's in a let's say a very small part. Of intersection, let's say, if you see the Venn diagram, let's say, of things that they do. Um, yeah, but eventually we, we we managed to to tackle all these uh, uh, peers uh, questions, you know, when just like when you're publishing a journal, right? Which that was really the first time I did that, and with a uh, professor, and eventually went into a publication. Sorry, there was someone at the streets with the dogs. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, basically, uh, that's the uh, that's the situation. So my and with regards to my uh, mathematical journey, let's say, eventually the paper got published. I think 2015, 2016. I forgot. Uh, and then the, afterwards, I'm working much more in a practical side. So uh, I also have for some. Uh, uh, side hustles, let's say, related to uh, uh, to algorithmic trading. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, which I also uh, spoke to. Yeah, some uh, some people with regards to the implementation of uh, machine learning and AI in financial okay. market. And yeah, and eventually, actually, mathematical. Uh, uh, yeah, my mathematical base are proven really, really useful here. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other side hustle that I also have is in the, uh, in the, uh, in the uh, uh, training and then uh, translation of uh, banking regulations uh, with regards to market risk. Uh, now this is going to be an interesting um, question. So basically, yeah, later mm -hmm. that uh, yeah that we are going to discuss. But uh, basically. Even though I'm not uh, really mathematics in uh, a mathematician in uh, uh, academic uh, field, let's say, yeah, um, I'm still uh, using it in various aspects of my works mm. in a very interesting way. Mm. <laughs> let's put it that way. Some in, in things in, in ways that I even never thought before when I started my journey back in bachelor. Yeah. Mm. Yes. So well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a short yeah. question, but it's a long uh, answer. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, it's yeah. it's very interesting. Um, you mentioned yeah. that you 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 didn't think you were gonna go into mathematics really, um, mm -hmm. but because you were more interested in computers and stuff like that. Um, what made you decide yeah. to go into mathematics and not even necessarily like a computer science degree or something like that? What was the yeah. what what was your initial, you know, intrigue into the mathematics field? Yeah. Okay, so uh, I actually already participated in some uh, mathematical competition, mathematics competition uh, since elementary school, um, uh, and then the, 
However, uh, uh, in the Indonesian university system, yeah, uh, people have to attend like a very uh, national uh, exam. Yeah. Yeah. Entrance, yeah. entrance exam. To entrance, university. entrance exam. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, in which you put like, uh, what is your first choice and second choice? Then I put my first choice in uh, informatics and second uh, mathematics. So it's this, actually this a second choice. It's very typical, right? <laughs> yeah, it's very typical. Uh, it's, it's very typical for. <laughs> <laughs> for, so yeah, first choice foundation. informatics, second choice yeah. mathematics. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And then, the, yeah, and Bandung Institute of Technology basically is uh, the best uh, engineering school in Indonesia. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and informatics engineering is like in, in the top notch, let's say, uh, of, yeah. of <laughs> nationally. So yeah, okay. um, yeah, like the top I didn't of the get... top at the in, in our yeah. university. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. like a uh, creme de la creme. Let's put it that way. Yeah. yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I didn't, I didn't get to that uh, uh, department. But uh, I, I even, but before that test, I actually kind of like, uh, yeah, pray, pray to God. Let's say, yeah, yeah. God, just give us, uh, give me your your uh, your choice. Let's say my choice might not be uh, the best uh, according to you. So when I got the the second choice in the end, I thought, okay, let's do my best here anyway. Mm-hmm. And then so it's a uh, becoming like a very interesting part because somehow I I had the sort of a feeling. Uh, after the test, somehow, like, uh, if I think about okay, programming, yeah, might be about codes, right? But there must be something bigger than this. Somehow, I had a feeling mm-hmm. myself even before the test. Like, mathematics might be actually interesting. I mean, I think about it, I've, I've worked on it, but I had the feeling that there's more on it. Mm-hmm. Somehow, I already had the feeling of just just before the exam. Mm-hmm. So when I got in and I saw, yeah actually a very uh, abstract courses like differential equation <laughs> algebraic <laughs> structures some and then, yeah and I was like okay H- how come there's there's uh, there are people discussing something like this it's like, it looks like <laughs> it looks like puzzles to me like a very difficult puzzle <laughs> and and my seniors are kind of like avoiding this course Oh, I felt <laughs> challenged. So, <laughs> so when when I and and that's just and that's just in me. I'm, I'm when I'm when I felt challenged, I must just go for it. Like uh, yeah. okay, like okay, okay. What can go wrong? Come on, let's do it. So, <laughs> so I, I took all the uh, yeah 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 not all but uh, most of the um, difficult courses. <laughs> <laughs> my optional course uh, choices uh, back in my bachelor only because I felt challenged. And that's all. <laughs> but, but eventually I I, I, I kind of enjoyed like uh, this, um, like especially uh, ge- differential geometry uh, course. Yeah. Uh, no way! Uh, sorry, this is the boss. Okay. Uh, Hello. Yeah. Okay, Hello. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Special special guest. Yeah, special. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So so in short, yeah. Uh, I think it's very interesting in the end uh, to think how how dimensions that are greater than what we can see how that than what we can perceive ourselves physically, hmm. uh, but we can somehow feel it and touch it by by understanding the theory and making proof mm. of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. So in short, it's, it might sound like a sort of a, a accident, <laughs> <laughs> but it turns out to be like a very interesting journey. Mm. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, no, it's very, very interesting. Um, so you are now working in banking. Um, so yeah. what is your experience with that? Like what is different for you than when you, you know, um, when you were working in more academia and, um, just mm-hmm. tell us your experience with banking in general, maybe. Uh, so when I just finished my bachelor, I, I had two jobs before, uh, going to my master degree. Uh, the first one is working with uh, AC Nielsen, so is uh, the famous uh, marketing research agency. Uh, I worked there for seven months, and then afterwards I saw uh, like a more, um, yeah, 
It's actually much more from the uh, salary, <laughs> let's say. <laughs> a better opportunity in, with a standard chartered bank. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, when there as a management trainee, so as a management trainee, basically oh. we're provided with a lot of uh, training and then the exposure to senior management. Yeah, like the CEO, CEO, CFO, CTO, and so yes. on, <laughs> all the C level. Um, uh, back in the uh, uh, management trainee side, uh, there was one very interesting project that I joined. Uh, yeah, because as a MT, uh, we were put into various projects. Uh, but this one that was very interesting is related to financial market uh, in the regulations. Uh, in which Standard Chartered Bank, uh, as an international bank, bank uh, operating in Indonesia, they have uh, these products called charged products. So these uh, charged products are actually uh, uh, sort of a financial market. You can think about interest rate swap, say, uh, uh, or um, options. Yeah, in let's say, in, um, in in financial market. But such products is more complex than that. Can be like a sort of a, not only one option, but the combination of options. Combination of uh, European options, American options, even uh, binary options, and so on, with uh, complex uh, uh, legal uh, agreement and structures, uh, in which eventually, of course, you will need uh, quantitative finance knowledge to really understand the pricing process and risk management process. Um, at the at the financial crisis 2008, uh, structured products is at the center of it, of this crisis. Uh, it's not the products that were traded in Indonesia, uh, but it is actually uh, products um, yeah, traded much more complex, even more complex than the one in Indonesia, but in the States and partially mm -hmm. also in Europe. Um, however, that pushed the central bank to issue the regulations in which it it it, it requires uh, not only traders, but also the risk managers and also the operation sites in which I was the management trainee of that uh, department mm -hmm. uh, to really implement these regulations. So... But it, 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 even the term, terminology with regards to uh, financial market, they also use that like a linear and non-linear payoff, for example, uh, to reflect whether is a is a simple or a more not <laughs> not not simple product. Let's say, it, and when they're talking about linear and non-linear, they're, they're really talking about how the graph is going to be a determination of the contract about the payoff, about the final payoff. Um, and so from there, that is basically how, when I start really using my mathematics knowledge <laughs> first time in, in a really outside, uh, really outside, uh, banking, like really that I felt really outside mathematics. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. that I really felt it, that my mathematics knowledge really, uh, became useful. Give, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That I can mm -hmm. really feel it. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so I had the various uh discussion with the uh, with the even with the legal directors with the risk uh, directors and then the uh, trading head as well of the indonesian team um uh, so it's uh with regard to what kind of regulation is this and what kind of products that we have and how we can identify in our system uh is a uh, is actually a, a difficult task i say and afterwards it, it, Actually, in, in, in the, it's during in the project, I realized that uh, this is something that I never saw even in, uh, in my uh, mathematics course, uh, financial mathematics course, the foundation mm -hmm. to get into this theory. So that's when I decided, okay, I really have to go for my for a master's degree this time. So that, that's when I really know that I need to go if I really want to understand this. Um, so that's actually how to start and mm -hmm. in banking, uh, actually, uh, not only when I was in Indonesia, but also in banking, when I started working in Rabobank, yep, where it's even more involved 
because when in Indonesia is just a part of the total portfolio, small part of the total portfolio of the bank. Now, when when I started working in Rabobank, it's like a big chunk of portfolio with billions of assets of structured products. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and here, yeah, and here my 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 uh my counterparts in the trading team, yeah, let's say sparring partners, yeah. Uh, they also talk uh, mathematical equations, even to the uh, down to numerical methods that they use. Like mm. you can solve it with Monte Carlo simulation or with a partial difference equation. Because yeah, now this is uh, when things get uh, really mathematics <laughs> when the magic <laughs> happens. <laughs> that uh, you have a SDE stochastic difference equation on one mm. side, and then via Feynman cac uh, you can put the equivalent of it to PDE, uh, mm-hmm. partial difference equations. When you want to solve it with the uh, in the SDE framework, you use Monte Carlo, and in the PDE you use a uh, FEM or finite difference. Let's say something like that. Mm-hmm. Now this is a uh, uh, when things get really interesting. It's really indeed when when I started in Rabobank. Uh, I work uh, closely with the trading team, uh, with the model validation team, with the FANG financial engineers, funding financial engineering team. Um, uh, even with the sales team as well, I, I even still have uh, one of my contacts from the sales team. He's a uh, he's a uh, one of uh, our uh, very good uh, senior director who who had deals even with the uh, uh, people uh, from Rothschild, let's say. Uh, yeah, so, uh, but but even in the sales, uh, uh, even in the sales team. Uh, He's actually still talking about this mathematical equation, and that's actually very interesting because back mm-hmm. at the start of my yeah 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 back at the start <laughs> of my uh, <laughs> mathematical career, uh, my mathematical journey, I thought like uh, okay, this thing's really abstract. No one's going to talk about it. I think. I mean, <laughs> when, when, whenever I go to to a relative, let's say, or or like a, like a, a events with with friends and so on, you know, in a restaurant. Yeah, when I brought about what what you studied, okay, well, I studied about different equations and then <laughs> and differential geometry and structural algebra. You know, it's actually interesting to see it with dimension n and okay. they they okay, what are you talking about? So that's that's the experience that's that's the experience that I felt when I was in Indonesia. Like <laughs> so, so so why why when I when I talk about these things and it was like really like with the senior sales director of a financial market structure products mm-hmm. it, it gives like a different importance that this this thing is actually mm-hmm. very important mm-hmm. so 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 you see it's a uh, uh, and okay and even further <laughs> the funny mm-hmm. thing is that uh, lately uh, since thousand no no actually since last year yeah let's put it like that since since since, uh, since last year I'm actually contacted by uh, people in Indonesia uh, to help translating the new banking regulations uh, that's adapted from the uh, global banking regulations issued from institutions in Switzerland, so Basel, okay. uh, so mm-hmm. Basel IV. Uh, this regulation is called uh, Fundamental Review of the Trading Book. Uh, is going to be, uh, well, actually have been incorporated in many banking laws uh, around the globe. And however, on the Indonesian side, they don't have a strong quant community. Mm. So they called me actually to to help translating and helping them to understand. Because it's not only about the mathematics, of course, but also sometimes about the loss in translation. Mm. Uh, so if they have someone who is a native Indonesian who can speak about yeah. it, it will be very helpful. Yeah. So that's how it is <laughs> for uh, my, my banking journey from mm-hmm. mathematics yeah. to banking. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we can talk more about it uh, if yeah. you have uh, more questions specific yeah. to it. Perhaps. Yeah. I have two follow-up questions. Uh, but actually, one, maybe Belinda, you know more about finite element method if you want to ask your anything yeah. about it. Maybe, <laughs> maybe you should, yeah. But my, my, yeah. my questions should be very quick to answer. Um, you mentioned about your, let's say, you call it your sparring partners at work yeah. um, at, yeah. at Rabobank. Um, mm-hmm. What degree do they have? Um, as, from what you said, they seem to be also heavy users of yeah. mathematics. Yeah. But uh, are yeah. they also mathematics graduate or? 
uh, less not all of them, but uh, mm-hmm. at least engineering, and oh, their okay. their degree, yeah, and their degree are at least on master. Uh, while my close colleague, well, much much more like a friend now, <laughs> he's a PhD <laughs> in uh, mathematics uh, or quantitative okay. physics, something like that. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Uh, quantum okay. physics, I mean, not quant- physics. quantum physics. Quantum yeah. physics, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's very interesting. Uh, it's yeah. it's it's nice to hear the um, that they there is an importance in mathematics in the in the banking sector at least. I'm not sure how yeah. it is here in South Africa. <laughs> I mean, but yeah. um, it's very good to know that it it, it mm-hmm. tells me that there's something good happening in that bank at least. So. <laughs> Yeah. But, yeah, but it's interesting to me because I um, also work um, on finite elements and it's, it's, it's nice for me to hear because I, I, I only know finite elements really um, being applied to more physical um, problems, if that makes sense, because I work more in like an engineering type situation, more physics, like, you know, beams and buildings mm-hmm. and all of those things. But it's very interesting mm-hmm. to me um, to hear this other side of it by, you know, applying it to, fi- to finance and stuff. It's, it's very nice to know. Yeah. <laughs> No. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, it is indeed an uh, uh, in, in interesting word uh, out there. Is uh, in, mm-hmm. in the finance side, um, if uh, to to be to be more precise, actually, uh, I I already touched a little bit of the banking regulation aspect and how it has many mathematical equations to it, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's there's actually another side of it, uh, which is in the accounting side. Now here it is, accounting standards. Mm-hmm. All you think about, all you can think about, is that let's say balance sheet, debit, credits, whether it is balanced mm-hmm. or not, on the left side, on the right side, <laughs> which has a line for this. Yeah, and uh, yeah. So yeah, and equity, of course, on the right side. Yeah. So so if you think about it like that, but actually, uh, since the global financial crisis two thousand eight. Uh, they've been changing a lot of uh, regulations, standards with regards to accounting, accounting practices, uh, when they want to determine whether it is um, uh, fair valued or not. Now, fair valuation is a very important concept in, in accounting. Um, yeah, so with regards to structured products, it is already clear. You have to evaluate with mathematical equation is uh, unavoidable. But lately, uh, for example, with uh, uh, IFRS 13, for example, uh, that is the uh, the terminology, the standard on uh, fair value. Uh, every company, not only the ones with uh, uh, with uh, in, in banking sector, whenever they have derivatives, they have also to anticipate the counterparty credit risk. And counterpart credit with respect to derivatives, this is actually a sort of a stochastic integral integration problem um, with a convolution on two stochastic processes, <laughs> in which one is the market risk side and the other one is the credit risk side. There are two ways to solve it. One is, of course, with Monte Carlo, but the other one also, of course, with uh, PDE. But for the PDE, you have to try to derive it again, perhaps with the mm. uh, uh, fancy, uh, fancy uh, Feynman Cock uh, technique, um, Feynman Cock like technique, from the SDA to PDE, and then you put it there. Now, in, 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 in MC simulation, of course, there's a sort of a curse of dimensionality. Um, so sometimes, even to price a whole portfolio, when the system crash, <laughs> they need another eight hours to run it, mm-hmm. or even a day. It can be the, it can be that extensive. Mm-hmm. So when when we think about fam, let's say that's I think where the the speed and uh, of, of fam can be very beneficial here, mm-hmm. because yeah. Well, there is also a, a course of dimensional in FAM, but you don't have to generate, let's say, uh, 10,000 iteration or so on. Let's say just like in uh, MC simulation, right? If you think about it from speed, uh, FAM indeed is much more mm-hmm. faster. But mm-hmm. how to formulate that problem now, that's a different question. Yes, I can imagine. Uh, yeah, so that's, 
that's how uh, uh, the use of mathematics are becoming uh, uh, very, very important in the end since the financial crisis because that is basically the start when taxpayers' money really used to, to bail out these banks. And that's why... Uh, to make sure, let's say, bankers do the good job. Uh, they they have to prepare sort of a, like a, a legit model and even validate it. They cannot just came with, oh, I think I can use this and then I have this model, just implement it. No, there should be someone in the other side who can do the four eyes on your model, peer review, and then after that, right. they can implement it. Yeah. yeah. So the use of mathematics were actually in the rise in the last years. Mm-hmm. It's good yeah. to know. Yeah, it's very, yeah. it's good and very interesting. I must say, it's I, I'm very surprised, or not surprised, but it's it's very um, I don't know what the word is, but um, motivating basically that this is happening. I'm glad. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And uh, you're, you also mentioned that you're you're involved in um, a bit of teaching. Um, oh yeah, or maybe yeah, training <laughs> uh, is. Is teaching the correct word, right? That, that you're helping, yes, yes, uh, helping out yeah. in um, in some courses in Indonesia. Can you maybe share a little bit more about that? How did that oh, yeah. come up? How did that come to be? And yeah, yeah, yeah. And what okay. courses and so on? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's a, a um, well, it's actually a funny start. Um, so two years ago, end of twenty twenty. I gave a chapter meeting speech uh, for the Global Association of Risk Professional, GARP. Uh, that's basically association who issued my uh, financial risk manager certification, uh, but for the Indonesian chapter. Uh, back then, after that first speech, uh, the GARP Association in New York uh, called me to give a speech as well uh, for their uh, global risk convention because they are interested in my um, uh, agri trading uh, activity, yeah, uh, related to model risk, model risk management, and how the regulation is going to be. Afterwards, someone in Indonesia started to ask me to give uh, some teachings, yeah. Uh, he's from a training uh, provider company, Indonesia, who normally normally provide uh, training services to large banks in Indonesia, uh, especially uh, in relation to that uh, Basel IV regulation that I briefly mentioned before. So I gave these uh, teachings uh, uh, several times uh, for banks before uh, in 2021, uh, uh, last year. Yeah. Um, afterwards, I also wrote some articles in magazines yeah, with regards uh, to this uh, regulation and how they should pay attention to it. And then shortly, <laughs> then shortly uh, someone that I knew from my, uh, my uh, university years in Paris, uh, in my master program, uh, he's, uh, he's heading a uh, economics uh, uh, science uh, department in Jakarta right now, in a university in Jakarta. And he asked me to start uh, teaching classes. So starting from this year, I'm also uh, teaching uh, mathematical economics. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In which uh, this is actually very interesting uh, because, uh, yeah, uh, while, while we know uh, that economic is social science. Uh, Keynes, uh, John Maynard Keynes, who is a very famous uh, uh, microeconomist, uh, he actually used the term in one of his quote that uh, mathematics is uh, very important for economists. Yeah, saying that in, uh, uh, the master economist must possess the following skills, something like that, in which mathematics is the first one that he mentioned. Hmm. Yeah, so I use this quote as a motivation when I teach this <laughs> this course. <laughs> yeah, uh, so I taught them uh, basically some simple yeah, 
formulation of equations, how they relate to your everyday problem, let's say. Uh, even I think what is where one is a very interesting concept in economics that the existence of general equilibrium. Yeah, mm. actually, the, the proof of uh, general equilibrium theory is sort of a mathematical proof in itself. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think it's a uh, John uh, Walras Walrasian equilibrium first. Um, uh, that's how the history is, uh, and that uh, I also teach uh, some parts with regards to uh, optimization techniques. Yeah, mm. yeah. Uh, I think um, I'm going to teach them about uh, a bit about difference between normal optimization and genetic algorithm, because that's uh, to to give them a sort of a, a modern view on the, how the use of a modern mathematical techniques in economics. Mm. So uh, I think this is uh, what what's important. Uh, in the uh, 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 economic side that they have to also still up to date with always up to date actually mm. with the latest mathematics techniques mm. that is in the store right now mm. so yeah so not only on the old mathematics books image optimization you just use gradient descent and then you stuck in mm. local maximum and then I want to go further, I want to go further, but you cannot. Yeah, no. <laughs> you use genetic algorithm and then, ah, there's another local actually, uh, <laughs> another uh, maxima actually, and then that's the yeah. global one. So, yeah. <laughs> you see, so it's um, that's a sort of um, uh, 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 actually uh, idea what, what kind of uh, modern techniques can take place <laughs> in the <laughs> economic side of things. Mm. Yeah, mm. yeah. Yeah, and this okay. is um, also part of our, well, when I saw you in person last year in the Netherlands, we had this conversation about, yeah. um, you, you mentioned this experience that you have well, working in the Netherlands in finance, and then um, yeah. you start teaching in Indonesia. And mm-hmm. in, in your view, especially your father being a professor in economics, um, that in Indonesia, economics and mathematics are quite divorced, if I can use this this word. Yeah, um, yeah. And you, you were quite disappointed that you, you felt that uh, that uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> that e- yeah, yeah. economists in Indonesia should really so to say catch up and um, and and really mm. uh, m- make make use of mathematics. Uh, could you perhaps comment more uh, about this? Mm. Oh, sorry, that's uh, my my son just screamed. <laughs> no, you don't hear it. <laughs> okay, uh, okay. Uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, uh, so um, basically, um, yeah, to give uh, one example, actually, when I just graduated from my master's degree in Paris, I went back to Indonesia and I got interviewed with one of the largest investment management, uh, state-owned uh, Indonesia. I had an interview with the head of trading and I talked about, a little bit about the algorithmic trading. And then <laughs> it's a uh, it's funny that uh, he Indian just said yeah in, in here we are actually quite simple we just use sort of a feeling you know some, some when you buy when you sell you, you just spot the pattern and so something like that just study the pattern and then okay <laughs> but then you know Renaissance technology uh, one of the biggest investment management in the world uh, founded by, by Jim Simmons was actually a, a senior mathematician when he started. Mm. And they actually consistently deliver 15% return per year. 15%. You cannot beat that <laughs> <laughs> with algorithmic trading, quantitative mathematics, mm. and techniques. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is from the investment management side. <laughs> and then from the... Um, well, with regards to this, uh, well, that that was when I just graduated, right? Mm-hmm. I thought the situation already changed, let's say, after I left the country like around 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. But after speaking with many uh, of my colleagues, my close colleagues in risk management, uh, even the ones from the uh, uh, Financial Service Authority uh, in, in Indonesia, uh yeah it turns out the situation haven't changed much uh i also heard it myself uh 
from actually uh, one of the professors that uh, uh, from our program uh, Adder. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, he said that uh, yeah, the situation is uh, really not uh, uh, haven't changed much. Um, so there's always a sort of a dichotomy uh, as let's just say it like that as if uh, between mm-hmm. the economics and the uh, mechanics part. Uh, it's funny because um, when I was in when I, when I was a child, uh, haven't started yet uh, in mathematics uh, bachelor program. Uh, my father actually used uh, a computer uh, computer general equilibrium equilibrium program, uh, GEMPEC, uh, that is used by microeconomists um, around the world. Even the renowned one, Indonesia, let's say Iwan Jaya Aziz, uh, if mm. you know uh, Adria, that's a famous name, uh, uh, to use. So it's, the use of mathematics is actually not that, it's, it's not uncommon, actually. Mm-hmm. But somehow, the in, not involving real mathematician into mm-hmm. uh, uh, helping economics problem, I think that's a, uh, that's the tricky part. Right. And uh, and this sort of cooperation, yeah, it's very difficult to see. It's very mm-hmm. difficult to see. So, with these regards. Mm, there should be sort of a, a better cross department cooperation, I think. Mm-hmm. And perhaps this is not only the situation in Indonesia, but quite globally. Right. Um, so I've I've seen it myself as a as a trained mathematics but working in banking sector that if we talk about just like this Basel four standards and the IFRS thirteen standards, yeah, both are completely from economy, yeah, from, from banking regulations and from accounting standards. Mm-hmm. Those two are part of the legislation. They are part of the legal system, mm-hmm. but they need mathematical translation. Mm. And this mathematical translation is not only about you understand it, you code it, and then you use it. No, someone else also need to validate it, just like yeah. a peer review journal. Yeah. So it's not a simple process. Hmm. So if you think that even the local banking, let's say the supervised banks, already unsure about what should we implement, but then they don't get a clear answer from the hmm financial service uh, service authority uh, supervisors now there's something wrong <laughs> mm-hmm. that they have to call someone outside from the country mm-hmm. to help with it with the with, with, with understanding it I'm going mm-hmm. to have a, a seminar actually next month mm-hmm. from the Indonesian Banking Association on risk management um, uh, to, to really give a speech again on this subject because I thought mm-hmm. I thought <laughs> after several trainings that I did already last year, you already yeah. started the uh, intrigue, and because I also wrote uh, uh, one two articles about it, mm-hmm. um, uh, I I, I kind of expect okay, perhaps now they uh, they, they already started to push the throttle. Let's say starting last mm-hmm. year. Uh, however, yeah, uh, we'll see uh, how how it, how it's uh, how it turns out mm-hmm. uh, from what I heard. Uh, because the mathematical concept in, is very, let, let's just say, when I, when I remember how uh, how it was back in Standard Chartered, when I just uh, I started in my banking sector in Indonesia, that was uh, 14 years, 13 years ago. Um, yeah, that, uh, that's, um, uh, it is indeed uh, challenging the mathematical mm. concept that they use in the uh, uh, in the regulations yeah? yeah yeah so so that's that's in short yeah yeah so that's that's how it is in short yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah it's, it is not so much of a, of a of a local problem if we put it like that but it's actually um, 
is a global problem that um, mm. that many areas are not working together. Um, yeah, I think so. But, uh, yeah, yeah, and it's not just finance. I think in many many areas now um, should actually come together and and uh, yeah solve solve problems together. Yeah, so yeah. Not just yeah, not just math and finance, but maybe math and something else, and and even something that we view or perhaps the social science versus the um, well, hard science, as people call it. I don't really like that name, to be honest, of hard science. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hard science. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's like physics and so on. Like you call it hard science. Uh, uh, I don't quite like that name. But anyway, um, yeah, it should, should uh, have close cooperation, right? Um, because if we, if we trace back the history, for instance, like physics, um, like calculus was invented because of physics, right? Um, so yes, uh, we, yeah. we cannot really separate um, all of these things. So I'm, I'm encouraged to actually hear that there are already close cooperation or let's say mathematics being used in finance. Yeah, maybe as we mm-hmm. uh, go along th- with our road not taken <laughs> series, we get to learn more and more about other areas as well. Yes. 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 Yeah. So I, I don't. I just. It's just a last question. So you mentioned um, that you were still publishing or have some articles going. So do you still do some research? In other words, as well, is that part of the banking, or is that just you know separate? Or uh, maybe I misunderstood. Um, maybe you can just elaborate on the you know the research part of what you were doing as well. Yeah. Uh, so currently. Uh, well, this is something that is, is quite a long shot, let's say. Uh, recently, I just got appointed as sort of a chair for the uh, economic research on AI and big data uh, implementation okay. in Indonesia, okay. so in that university that I teach. Mm-hmm. Um, we, I actually have a sort of a plan to, to create a sort of um, research cooperation, yeah? Uh, between okay. uh, European institutions and Indonesian institutions, in which uh, we expect the outcome would be to have <laughs> to have a sort of a working uh, treasury IT systems, um, uh, that we can mutually use uh, uh, together. Let's say uh, in in the banks with uh, in Indonesian banks as, in particular, yeah. Uh, so that 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 also builds the the knowledge. So perhaps it is not really research, but mm-hmm. it is much more like a, a global cooperation to increase the knowledge uh, mm-hmm. using the uh, with with the help from uh, uh, much more advanced uh, universities uh, with the help of the. Uh, on this particular subject, because mm-hmm. I see that the because uh, the way I see it is that the the need is already really growing, yeah, mm-hmm. for this, and and yeah. That's cool. mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, no, that's interesting to know, but it's good yeah. that these things happening in that way at least. It's very encouraging. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, well, well. We'll see. We'll see because it needs a lot of. Uh, uh, good uh arrangement of course and it's not mm-hmm. a it's not an easy yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. no definitely mm-hmm. okay um so Gior, we're about to um wrap up uh so yep. we usually ask our guests the our final question is um do you have any advice for our students so just mm-hmm. to give you a little bit of also maybe you can make it a little bit more specific we have um uh, various programs here for our mathematics degree. So we have mm-hmm. uh, BSc Mathematics, we have BSc Applied Mathematics, but we also have um, a program in our honors, um, Financial Mathematics, also Financial Engineering. So our financial mathematics um, researchers are quite uh, quite, uh, quite active. Yeah, and mm-hmm. in fact, they, they have their own separate program. And they, yeah. they also take courses, it's the same courses that the mathematics students also, also take. So maybe particularly okay. for those students or yeah. those students who are, <laughs> yeah, 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 who are yeah, studying mathematics and wondering maybe you know um, a lot yeah. of our a lot of our students sometimes ask us like oh if I graduate with a mathematics degree um, what work what kind of work can I can I get and a lot of them seem to think that they can only become you know teachers or something like this this is obviously <laughs> yeah, not true <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah and so yeah no. we'd like to yeah get get some. Uh, 
yeah, some advice from you maybe for our students. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, um, I'll just uh, say it like this. I mean, if I if I can repeat my under undergraduate years, uh, I will definitely will be very very uh, grateful if uh, if someone will will tell me indeed where which areas that I can work on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, mathematics actually being used everywhere. It's just the way how you use it. Um, for example, when you are using using it for database modeling, uh, which is uh, the one uh, the project I'm currently working on with uh, with Turbo mm -hmm. it's a new project. Uh, you definitely cannot cannot really use your partial difference equations anymore. <laughs> yeah, uh, you might. Um, it's, it's another set of mathematics to use. Let's say it's much more to graph theory, how to mm. make the relationship between the database objects um, okay. less complex. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But when you go, let's say, to market research here in AC Nielsen, now you will use statistical techniques. Yeah. Perhaps not the Again, not the stochastic differential equations, uh, but the sampling part. Mm. How to create an effective question form when you want to study brand effectiveness. Mm. If you go, let's say, to uh, to something like uh, Gojek, <laughs> which is a famous <laughs> startup. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, now. You Should will we explain use explain maybe what Gojek is. <laughs> yeah, uh, Gojek is a famous uh, startup, uh, a unicorn in, in Indonesia. Uh, so mm -hmm. that's uh, basically related to uh, ride sharing, sort of like Uber. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. but using motorcycle. Yeah, okay. uh, yeah. Then you got to study, of course, the part uh, of mathematics that use big data. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and machine learning there. Yeah. But if you go, let's say, to uh, even the, the funny part is that even go, let's say, to banking regulations with regard to market risk, the one that we're doing right now. <laughs> then going... Now, on that part, then um, you have to, yeah, indeed, you have to use not, uh, not really graph theory, but really then you have to deal with the PDE, partial difference equations, then. Because mm -hmm. over there, you have this sort of uh, concept of Greeks, which is sensitivities with regards to interest rate movement, uh, equity market movement, commodity market movement, and so on and so on. And so. Yeah, in, in the end, it's a sensitivity analysis, PD and SDE. So think about not only the mathematical subject, but if I can repeat, then I would need someone who I can talk about what I want to be, that mm -hmm. is first. Mm -hmm. And what mm -hmm. are the mathematical tools to get there? Mm -hmm. Now, that's the tools that I want to shape. Mm -hmm. I think that's, uh, in the end, what's uh, very uh, interesting Yeah, uh, for mm -hmm. students. yeah. So think about what you mm -hmm. want to be, like yeah. what you love most. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Very, very, it's a very interesting very sentiment, actually. Yeah, very, very good advice. Um, because it's like you yeah. say, like mathematics, you just, you can use mathematics for anything almost. You just need now, yeah. what do you want to do? And then you'd go from there. I think yeah. that's a very nice yeah. sentiment. Exactly. I love it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. also, I think this is, um, this is a lesson for, for us academics as well to actually mm. read up on these things and have discussions mm. with, with people who are working in, in, let's say, corporate or finance or mm. engineering or other areas. So that we can tell yeah. our students, you know, we're, the, yeah. we're not necessarily knowing the details, yes. but knowing, just yeah. knowing that uh, um, how things that seemingly um, so abstract can be actually um, used in, in many areas. Mm. Yeah. 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 Very encouraging discussions, Dior. Thank you very yeah. much. 
Um, <laughs> Likewise. Thank you yeah. for the opportunity as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, once again, Dior, thank you very much for joining us uh, for this episode. And I hope, uh, yeah, our audience can uh, can learn many things from our conversations. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Sure and uh, uh, if Hope yeah, so. <laughs> if, um, <laughs> if we have a, if we have students who probably want to ask you um, questions and so on, would you be um, open to maybe I can share your email or something like this? Uh, yeah, of course. Please? Yeah, why not? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. We can we 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 can um, yeah. Uh, if students mm-hmm. want to uh, contact your, uh, let us know, and we'll uh, mm-hmm. we will we will uh, notify him. Okay. Thank you very much and yeah, see you uh, next time. Bye. Yeah, see you next time. Bye-bye.